Hello! Shoyan here. I'm a carpenter based in Japan. Today, I'll be building a tokonoma made entirely of hinoki cypress in a Japanese style room. It'll be a two tiered structure. This tokonoma differs from previous ones as it's a two tier structure. In a two tier tokonoma, the front floorboard is installed at the depths that one third of the front, which will be level with the tatami mat. Above the front seal called kamachi, the remaining two thirds becomes the tokonoma. There will be front and upper floorboards, two tiered. In the past, tokonomas were always built this way, with a study room attached to the side. A two tier tokonoma is used in traditional ceremonies, such as engagement ceremonies. When displaying an engagement gift set on the tokonoma, a two tier structure with the front and upper floor makes the decoration more beautiful. For this tokonoma, I'm using a wide, single board for both the front and upper floor. Normal single tier tokonomas are usually made of thin Delcova veneer. Since the construction shop of this house values solid wood, I'm using a single solid wood board. Planing a wide board is a demanding task for carpenters. The board is thick, and such wide boards are not often used. You can only see this type of board in sushi restaurants. In the past, when I was an apprentice, my master instructed me to plane the cutting board of a sushi restaurant at the end of the year. At that time, the board was thick, wide, and long, so it was a tough job. It also smelled of vinegar, and the hand plane was damaged. I managed to process it. Now, let's proceed with the work on site. Plywood panels measuring 24 millimeters are installed on the floor. So I'll build a tokonoma on top of that, like building blocks. Since the thick plywood floor is already installed, it's relatively easy to install the joists. However, when installing the upper floor, I can't stand on the ground of the cross space, so I need to work under it. Hey everybody, wake up! There's a risk in leaving a solid board on site for a long period. So I cover them with a blanket to minimize warping until it's installed. The quality of the timber can be judged when I cut it with a circular saw. First, I'll know if the wood is easy to process. Some wood is easy to blame. But I won't know how much it shines until I plane the wood due to the individual differences of Hinoki Severus. The backside is not planed well, but since it won't be visible, it doesn't need to be planed. I focus on finishing the front surface. I start by installing the front floorboard. A fly mistook me for a cow and came up to me. It's been decades since I managed to grab a fly.
、まあ寒くなってくるとの,のろくなるしねおーやな The installation of the front floor is simple. Just notch the floorboard thickness on the pillar and join it. Only the room side will be notched about 15 millimeters. It will be a stopped dado joint. The top won't look good if I use a through dado joint, which means the groove reaches the front and can be seen. It may look stable and easy when notching wood above the floor, but the line of sided hands hit obstacles as the movement may be restricted. This is a challenging part. Anyway, it's important to install it snugly, and it's not good to make excuses and reduce quality. I'm struggling. It will be the same work for the front floorboard, even if the building materials are used. In that case, I first join the board to the 15mm notch on the pillar on the room side, mark the length, and remove it. Building materials are hard to scratch and have slippery properties. In the past, a waxed finish was common instead of staining because the wax was applied to the building materials. It slides well. In the case of solid wood, it can get damaged and possibly scratched if I join and remove it. So, ideally, it should be joined accurately on the first try. Now I'm installing the front floorboard. Because it's thick, I'll secure the front board with glue and screws from the back. Since the place to screw is narrow, I roughly screw the board from the bottom of the joist beforehand. Tap the board's edge to compress it well so that it joins the pillar smoothly, but my installations are always tight. This time, it was a bit tight. As it's difficult to remove this and adjust the timber again, I'll join it as it is. Screwing from the back was challenging, as expected. Most parts were not visible, and I needed to secure it while pummeling with the screws. I managed to screw it. After forcibly installing the board, I apply water. 
the wood swells well as soon as water is supplied. The board will be thicker than the original size. This is one of the advantages of solid wood, and it is easy to handle. Once the front board is installed, I'll process a sill called a kamachi. The dimensions of the kamachi are not fixed, but the height is longer than the width. The front is cross grain, and the top is straight grain. The family outer room's kamachi will be the opposite. The surface of the kamachi on the tokonoma has a unique shape. I chamfer the front top of the kamachi to 45 degrees. The bottom is gentler than 45 degrees. I don't know the exact reason for the meaning of this shape, but it has been traditionally used. Between the front floorboard and the kamachi, I use a piece of dimmer with a different color as a trim. The same type of wood could also be used, but honestly, this is a clever carpenter's trick. When light colored timbers are joined, the gap may appear dark. Therefore, by using a brown wood, even if it isn't quite black, the gap is not noticeable. I think that's the reason for using different colors of boards. In the past, a very dark ebony wood was popular for a kamachi. It was always used, whether the floorboards are zokoba or hinoki cypress. And we added a white line to the corner of the top and bottom of the chamfer area. There will be decorative vertical flat strips called hanzuka on the kamachi. Some tokonomas doesn't use this, but the design will not be neat without it. This decorative strip takes time to install. I will use a dado joint, which means notching the width of the board and joining the board's ends as it is. Regarding the decorative strip's notch, the depth should be precise to install it at a right angle. This time, I'll notch it exactly at 15 millimeters. The difficult part of the Kamachi chiseling is a surface. A small chisel is required to adjust the angle because the surface is small, which is a challenging task. The length of the decorative strip is proportional to the size of the kamachi. I cut the length so that it looks vertically long. This installation of the decorative strip is just about notching and joining it. After it's installed, I'll secure it with four screws from both sides. The wide angle can be adjusted somewhat by the tightness of the screws, so attach it so that the decorative strip stands straight. Then I trim the lower end of the kamachi. Instead of attaching it to the front floorboard, I attach the trim to the kamachi and offer it as one part.
Now that the Kamachi is installed, it's finally time to install the upper floorboard. Once it is installed, it will become a tokonoma. I finished the board with a hand plane, but the thickness is not uniform because it hasn't been run through the jointer and planer. The four corners are roughly the same thickness, so I cut both ends, place the offcuts in place, and level them by adjusting the joists. This means the joist height will be lower on the thick board area. If the top is horizontal, there is no problem at all. I measure the board thickness and adjust the height of the joists. I first place the upper board temporarily. Even though I've already measured the location by placing it on the floor, the location might not necessarily be the same after the Kamachi is installed. Therefore, I mark the area where it overlaps by placing it on the Kamachi. Now, I proceed to install the upper board. As usual, I secure it with glue and screws from the bottom. It's inevitable that the glue squeezes out when installing a board at an angle, but since it's woodworking glue, it'll be clean once wiped off. However, if I don't wipe it off immediately, a stain can remain, so I need to be careful. Next, I screwed from the back. I was able to get under the place more than expected, but I still struggled a lot. I screwed from the top, and the upper board is secured. As usual, I apply glue to the ends to prevent cracks. It's better to apply it generously and dynamically with your fingers. That said, basically, only the center of the grain cracks. Next, I will install the ceiling and walls. I install the trim first. Carpenters are split on whether to install trim early or later in the process. I do it first. Since there are furring strips in the board, I can firmly screw the trim to the upper floorboard from above. In the middle of the wallboard, I install a board called Kumoita. Since the board is thick, it is installed at the back of the wallboards and is secured to the furring strips. I've completed installing the tokonoma with the front floor. With the front floorboard and decorative strip, it looks cool. That's all for today. Thanks for watching.